and just exposing the results, which then maybe is not enough for, for, for people to do what they want. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do like a bend likelihood, it'll be more sensitive for that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, are there any last urgent questions? I don't see any, and it's actually time to move on. Next up is uh, Lina again. Okay. <laughs> so you can stay unmuted. I hope you can see my... Yes, we can see that. And we stay in the Higgs sector with uh, the point, light point, sorry, you can wait, the sensitivity yeah. from uh, Higgs pair production. Please, Lina. Just one second. Uh, all right. So um, good morning, everyone. And um, today I'll be providing a, a kind of an overview about what are we working on and using um, Higgs pair production to probe light uh, Yukawa couplings or in general light couplings between Higgs and light quarks. So this is based on a paper we have uh, published uh, myself, um, Ramona Gruba and um, Roberto Corral Lopez and also um, other work uh, Ramona and I are working on. Uh, and the third work, uh, we are uh, making kind of a bigger collaboration with Christophe Rojan, I am Paul and uh, Joni Kwan, which is um, all focused on this aspect. So um, before I go there, I will just give um, kind of a short, um, short um, preliminary thing. So we all know that um, in the standard model, we uh, have the, um, the, C the CKM, and the quark mass is all coming from uh, this Yukawa uh, interaction term, which uh, when we, uh, when the Higgs acquires a VEV, um, it, it not only breaks the uh, gauge symmetry of the standard model, it's U2 times U1, but also it breaks the global flavor symmetries into uh, just focusing on the quark sector now, into the uh, baryon number, which is U1. So um, the uh, broken generators, gen, uh, we have uh, like we have only free, uh, 10 uh, broken generators. So six, uh, sorry, uh, 10 free parameters, six of them is the quark masses and three is the CKM angles and one CP phase from the CKM. So, um, and these 10 par parameters are really, does not come from any um, first principles, so they are just measured. And they have a very large hierarchy. If you just look at the quark masses or the coupling here, it differs a lot uh, significantly between the generations and even among the generations themselves. So this was a puzzling and uh, known uh, currently as the old flavor puzzle, as opposed to the new flavor puzzle that people see as in the, the B to M. SLL anomalies, for example. So why the Higgs couple so differently to these generations? And actually we haven't even measured these couplings uh, directly and they are weakly constrained anyway. So they know direct measurements, uh, but if they are constrained, they are quite weak. It's not like uh, the other Higgs couplings. So um, just the introduction of notation before I go on. Uh, we have this kappa bar, which is ratio between the coupling uh, of these light quarks of first and second generation, when I say light, and the uh, standard model beauty, um, opposed to the one that's without a bar, which is just the standard model coupling. So the ratio is just the mass between the, the quark and the beauty, uh, if you want to convert between them. I'm sorry. Um, so what has been done uh, so far? Um, so people have looked at, at the light quark coupling via several channels. For example, Higgs plus C production, which has been um, Brivio, uh, Isidori and Gertz, which gave uh, measured particularly the uh, charm Yukawa, uh, which is what they found it, it was quite, if you we extrapolate it to the high luminosity, it will be in order one measurement provided we have charm tagging. Um, the Charital measured Higgs kinematics via gluon fusion for Higgs plus jet, um, which provided also a charm um, 
Yukawa constraint. Um, Budwin et al. and so on, and others uh, measured um, rare decays of the Higgs from mesons to gamma, which provided, uh, so this is a single operator fit, but I will show later a more combined uh, one, kind of a rather weak kappa, but uh, nevertheless, that's uh, something that's hard to constrain anyways. Um, Higgs kinematics, which is similar to this one, but here is a quark initiated, as you can see, uh, if you look at quark, um, anti-quark uh, going to Higgs plus jet, and you look at the PT distribution as they have looked, um, and you see it's quite sensitive to different values of um, kappa bar here, they, what they did. Um, so that gives quite a stringent constraint if we extrapolate it to the um, run three of the NHC. Other approaches, which is kind of more out of um, just single Higgs, um, which is Higgs plus W, um, a charge asymmetry, which is done by U. Um, and if you just run, um, you, you run these values of charm strange up and down, and um, uh, you look at the charge asymmetry, it'll be different. So uh, though the, the bounds are weak, but it, you, it could somehow distinguish between the behavior of each of these um, flavors, if you kind of uh, change of each of the flavor differently. Higgs plus gamma, which is a rare Higgs process, uh, um, provides a bit of a constraint on the up, but it can break the degeneracy between up and uh, down, uh, quark Yukawa. Uh, we have triple gauge boson production, which provide a, a improved bounds upon the, the Higgs plus gamma. And um, actually, Natasha will give a talk just after me, so stay tuned. I'm not going to talk more, no spoilers. Um, um, another way is to use the B tagging um, and uh, of course, the B tagging has different uh, efficiencies depending on the cut, experimental cut people use. So you'll have uh, C, C, um, C jets misidentified as B jets, and you can use that uh, for constraining uh, Charm Yukawa, which is done Perez et al. and, and Kim and Park, which uh, I will also talk about. There are uh, of course, the Higgs pair production, which is what we have done, um, uh, Ruba, uh, Roberto, and, and myself, uh, which is a model independent way we have done, but also we have model dependent uh, using um, two Higgs doublet model, um, which two, two, two collaborations have made, which of course uh, resulted in a bit of a stronger constraint, I mean, more stronger constraint, but on the expense of model uh, dependence. Um, so we see here how um, you can have a change on the Higgs um, to strange, uh, which is weakly measured by us, but they get something close to the 20, um, which is um, much better than others. But of course, it is mean model dependent. Um, other model dependent analysis uses vector like quarks, like a universally enhanced light Yukawa. Others like um, uses something more creative and extra dimension like randall Sandra model. Um, so we can think of all these approaches as, as complementary to each other. So because each, uh, each process or each analysis uses different assumption and compared to the global fit, which has an um, assumption on the Higgs, uh, sorry, Higgs width, so an assumption on the invisibles, of course, yields a very strong constraint, but it's not the same as, as the direct measurements. And if we sum everything here, you can see these two plots kind of sums everything. In Kunings and uh, Newbert, they have a kind of non-trivial correlation between these, and I could not convert them to the unbarred kappas. But of course, these plots kind of shows a hierarchy between the constraints, but this is not exactly true, as I said, because every um, 
measurement has a different assumption. These should be taken into grain of salt. But in general, we see that um, there's a lot of space to, uh, for improvement because the, weak, the constraints are still weak. But if we look at an effective field theory perspective um, for, for the light uh, Yukawa, um, things are a bit, diff uh, are a bit different. Uh, so we have two ways to look at, or two effective field theories uh, one can mainly look at, which is the chiral Lagrangian, which is just an extension of the chiral Lagrangian that uh, people usually use. But here we add uh, the light uh, quark uh, operators, CQ and CQQ. So this is uh, one people look at as actually the kappa, but this is uh, a bit new because this in induces two Higgs and two quarks. So if you're not looking at a multi Higgs uh, production like double Higgs production or multi boson production like what Natasha will see, um, Kappa is, is this only, there's not, is not sensitive to this one, to this, um, we'll see coefficient. But in SMEFT, uh, Kappa uh, formalism is related to both, right? It will, because um, Kappa will be um, related to CHQ, but CHQ in, in SMEFT, in standard model flexibility theory here in Warsaw basis, actually enters in uh, directly the Yukawa but are also uh, in the Higgs Higgs QQ. And this would give a bit of an advantage to, uh, to our bounds that you saw here and here. So this is the, the bluish thing is our work and here's the, our work. It gives us a bit of an advantage because we're not really probing uh, Kappa directly. We're probing um, uh, SMEFT, um, this operator. But um, it seems that if you look in the literature, uh, these operators or these Wilson coefficients are rarely talked about. I mean, not very rarely, but not as common as the top or trilinear uh, Higgs coupling. And in SMEFT, um, the bounds are not that weak anyways uh, on these operators. So this is the current bound on the top uh, SMEFT operator CTH. So this is the value versus, you know, the scale of new physics. And this is what prospects um, for the high luminosity light C for uh, the charm and uh, the up. And you can see they are not that different actually. Um, so in SMEF, the picture is not that these operators are weakly measured at all. So one can have um, some, some UV model that will uh, enhance all the Yukawa um, to, um, oh no, what I meant to say, will have SMEFT operator CQH universally enhanced or universally like, uh, you know, with some value 0 0.1, for example, but will, will in, induce large modifications to light quarks. So this is, you can see the, the Kappa formalism is not uh, giving a justice to, to if you look strictly within SMEFT, because uh, even a small change in CHQ will give a large change for kappa, right? You see from these ratios. Um, and even for a larger scale, if you push it uh, to 5 TeV. But the real challenge is to prevent flavor change in neutral currents from happening. Even though if you construct a model that's inherently um, does not contain these, non flavor uh, diagonal uh, sorry non diagonal flavor coupling but you could have uh, renorm and within the rge the normalization group equation you could have running there but there were some attempts uh, to remedy that using minimal flavor violation or spontaneous flavor violation or uh, aligned flavor violation so um, and the third thing is we attempt to do also combined fit between the trilinear coupling and like Yukawa like was done with Azatov. But when they have the combined one within, within the up, uh, sorry, this is not the up, the top and the uh, trilinear, which has not been done before for the light quark. Um, so this is what I will be uh, discussing in our work. So um, 
First of all, the first generation bounds for the high luminosity LHC. So we did the same uh, analysis that Azatov et al. Were, were doing here, the same cuts and everything. And um, in our paper, we, we did inclusive fit and we get a bit of a acceptable bounds on Kappa. Uh, again, this is not exactly the same Kappa as I told you because we're using SMIFT. But if we have used a kind of a inclusive analysis with five MHH and five PT T bin categories, we, we get much improved fits, uh, as you can see here in Kappa. And um, so here we have the, um, the, the actual operator uh, we are fitting against, though the actual Wilson coefficient, which is CDH and CUH versus uh, kappa u and kappa d, assuming that uh, the uh, new physics scale is um, uh, one TV. The large uncertainty is here because we are assuming the large uncertainty in the background because we don't know how things will improve in the high luminosity C. The reason this is improved because if you look at the um, MHH distributions, you'll see that they are indeed sensitive. Um, the nor this is normalized with the cross section, so they are indeed sensitive to change in the flavor, right? I mean, this is not. Uh, it's not very. It's not really close to this one, but if one uses more uh, categories, like included more uh, distributions, the fit will indeed improve, as you will see. So now we. Um, we're planning on including um, in a new publication um, the combined fit between the trilinear coupling uh, uh, modification and the uh, light Yukawa, like Azatov did for the top. And uh, we saw he, we see here there is no much of a correlation. But of course, if one wants to have a kind of precise measurement in kappa lambda or ch, one needs to know uh, the values of c u h. Um, or at least do a combined fit because, or have an assumption on them because, of course, with different uh, values, um, you you you'll get different uh, you you'll get different uh, marginalized distribution. Yeah. So here we get uh, if you marginalize over kappa u and kappa d or, or c a d h, you get what you expect uh, for the higher luminosity and c indeed. But um, this will not be the case if, if there is an, an uh, assumption on, on these operators. Uh, if we move on to the chiral Lagrangian, there's no bounds on this CQ. Uh, so the literal meaning of kappa, we cannot, um, we cannot constrain using the Higgs production because um, CQ enters in the production, but it enhances the production a bit weakly but it also affects the decay. So it uh, kind of widened the, the width of the Higgs. So the uh, BB bar gamma gamma, which is the channel we're looking at, will be diluted uh, uh, compared to other, because it will open other channels for light Yukawa, for light quark, sorry. But it can constrain this operator, CDD and CUU. Uh, so it kind of breaks the degeneracy. The degeneracy. So it kind of probes the nonlinearity of this uh, EFT. And uh, indeed, we can do combined fit between CUU and C6 uh, and CU and uh, C6. And uh, you can see there's no correlation here, but here there's a slight one because this operator will enter again in the decay. So it will kind of spoil um, the bounds on C6 if, if you have large coupling here or large uh, Wilson coefficient. Now. This, this is a bit important if you're looking at UV models that have non-linear uh, uh, relation between, uh, between Yukawa and, uh, double, uh, and Higgs, Higgs, QQ coupling. For example, here's a, um, here's a model when you have a such linearity, which is a composite, minimal composite Higgs model based on, uh, on an OTIN. And of course, um, this is just a toy model because based on Gilot et al. When, 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 when they have studied um, 
this for for beauty but we i just um, made a quick thing when i made the same thing for the light quartz um now what about the second generation um sadly the double higgs is not ideal for this what we can do is we can do the mistagging of as i talked about uh, the mistagging of c jets and b jets and also combine this with uh, some c jet working point a C tagging working point. And you can get some correlation between the uh, B, uh, B signal strength and C signal strength. And you can, um, you start to have some bounds on charm and some bounds on strange, uh, be just because you have two channels now to look at, uh, BB bar gamma gamma and CC bar gamma gamma, but the bounds are not that good on, them, on, on themselves, by themselves. Uh, for future colliders, we could use the same principle and we'll get very nice bounds for the high energy LHC, if, even if that happened. Um, so down and up uh, very, very close to um, very close to the global fit uh, prediction. But of course, um, we don't know exactly uh, if, if, if Indeed, we'll have high energy LHC and how the B tagging capabilities will, will be. Uh, of course, if you would look at uh, more um, direct probes for like charm and strange, that's possible because there have been some developments in flavor tagging, for example, strange and charm uh, tagging to be very exact. Um, 100 uh, TEV collider would probably just probe everything. Uh, but it's hard to make assumptions really or something will happen, I don't know, 50 years later. Okay, so um, a general outlook, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we introduced a um, few bins uh, on the kinematics and the, of the, of the double Higgs and we get significant improvement. Uh, we can take this to the extreme by in, in using a boosted decision tree. And this is our next project. Oh but with some, uh, some interpretability. So we can look at what really the kinematical distribution that affect the, that distinguishes um, double Higgs production, a double Higgs signal, for example, QQ to HH um, from gluon fusion, and we can get a way uh, better result than just using cuts. So here, very preliminary results on what we expect to get. Um, in the uh, in this analysis, but of course it's not done yet, so this might change. Um, we haven't talked about, for example, uh, flavor violating, uh, like you know, um, non-diagonal things, uh, your, uh, Higgs and uh, quark coupling. Also, CP odd couplings are still need need to be uh, uh, studied, like to do combined fits when something you have CP odd and CP even. Um, the, the, if you want to stick to the kappa formalism, we really don't know uh, how to normalize it uh, uh, with respect to the quark mass, because if you're doing NLO studies, um, like what we did here, how we would define the quark mass and quark, uh, light quark mass and quark, light quark mass running, which normalization scheme. Um, though there are some UV complete models, but we are lacking some um, um, some more models like vector like quarks. We, we have models that would say that the EFT will not work as in um, uh, two Higgs doublet models, but we need more, more models with vector like quarks. And um, something to say, okay, if we have large modifications for um, Yukawa's, how we could uh, fit that within the flavor. Um, uh, constraint which prevent flavor changing neutral current. Um, more on the charm tagging and, and combination that with B tag jets. Could the old flavor puzzle be linked to uh, the new flavor anomalies like what uh, Bordeaux et al has done in 2017? Uh, this is a rich topic in my opinion that needs to be, um, you know, studied more even by experimentalists. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. 
Uh, we have time for maybe uh, one or two very quick questions. Is there any from the room? Uh, I don't see any at the moment. I see Alejo has one. Yes, thanks, Katia, again, and thanks, Lina, for the nice talk. I had a question regarding your slide nine, where you show some plots with a expected and theory, and I really don't understand what you call expected and theory in those plots. I especially, I don't know uh, why they don't match when the Wilson coefficient goes to zero. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, so these are just like the Brazil plots experimentalists do. So the expected is. Um, the expected uh, signal, so to speak. Um, so we, you, you're doing a search on, on this operator, on, on this Wilson coefficient, right? Mm -hmm. So if you only inject Asimov data, or like a, in a less technical term, if you inject only the standard model hypotheses, mm -hmm. um, this is the sensitivity you, you would expect to have with some uncertainty coming from the back, uncertainty on the background. Um, and the theory is the uh, cross-section times the branching ratio, uh, just from the uh, calculation of uh, QQ going to uh, HH and HH going to BB bar gamma gamma. And 